Today's case is yet another devastating, horrific case of a child who should have been safe in her own home, but wasn't. She wasn't protected like she should have been. Instead, she was subjected to unimaginable abuse for years on end, and no one did anything to stop it until it was too late. This case is still very much an ongoing and active case, but I feel that we do have enough information to get an idea of what's going on here. But before we get into the case, I want to give you guys a quick reminder that I will be at CrimeCon in Nashville this year. It's the last weekend of May going into the first week of June, so if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, I highly suggest you do so. The tickets are selling out very fast, but if you use my code RACHELSHANNON, you can get 10% off of your ticket. I cannot wait to see all of you guys there. With that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we are going to be discussing the horrific murder of Madeline Soto. Madeline Soto is the daughter of Jennifer Soto, and she lived in Kissimmee, Florida with her mom and her mom's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns. Maddie turned 13 on February 22nd, 2024, celebrating with a birthday party on the 25th. This was such an exciting day for her, getting to celebrate the transition from being a child to now being a teenager. She was so excited to get all of her gifts and be surrounded by people who loved her. She went to bed very happy that night. However, her teen years were extremely short-lived. By the following day, on February 26, 2024, Madeline was last seen being driven to school by Stefan. However, by around 4.30 p.m. when her mother went to pick her up from school, Jen realized that Maddie was actually absent that day. She never showed up to class. She spent three and a half hours looking for Maddie, calling around to see if anybody had seen her before ultimately, by 8 p.m. that same night, Jen reported her daughter as a missing person to the Kissimmee Police Department. After the report, police responded to the home where they spoke with Jen and her boyfriend, Stefan. In that initial interview, Stefan told the police that he drove Maddie to school that morning at around 8 a.m., dropping her off in front of a church located just down the street from school. After that, he hadn't seen her again. After interviewing Stefan, the last person known to have seen her, police went and questioned everyone else who knew Maddie and could possibly have answers to where she had gone. However, after questioning several friends and family members of Maddie's, police realized that the story they were being told by Jen and Stefan just didn't add up. Family members and friends all said that it was very unusual for Maddie to be dropped off for school at the church. That was not something they normally did, so why was it done on this particular day? Then they found that Maddie's phone was left at home. Those closest to Maddie knew that she would never have left for school without her phone. And beyond that, they knew that Maddie never would have willingly skipped school. She had never skipped school before, it just wasn't in her personality. So this whole situation was very out of character for Maddie. So already, something about this whole situation just isn't sitting right. Pretty much immediately, investigators knew that there had to be more going on here. By the following day, February 28th, the searches for Maddie were in full swing. More than 50 law enforcement officers spent the days following Maddie's disappearance searching the surrounding areas around the school, the creek, and woodlands behind the school and in the neighborhood. They used ATVs and cadaver dogs to see if they could find any sign that pointed them to where Maddie could be. They alerted the public to her disappearance, stating that they are concerned for Maddie's safety. They handed out flyers and spoke with any and all possible witnesses around the area. However, at that time, all of their searches were coming up empty. That same day, Maddie's mother, Jen, went on Fox News for her first interview where she gave her version of events. She basically reiterated Stefan's story, saying that he dropped her off right by the school. She should have walked to the school from the church, but has no idea why she may not have. After going to pick her up from school, she realized that Maddie was absent that entire day. And after searching for her for a bit, that is when she realized that something was horribly wrong. During this interview, Stefan can be seen in the background just sort of sitting there and listening, not really making eye contact or contributing to the interview. Jen, go ahead and, and tell us what's going on with Maddie. Well, um, Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off close to school, across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next to the school. Um, 
she crossed the street and walked to school, what we thought walked to school. Um, my boyfriend who drove her to school walk, drove away at that point. It was seen on video footage that she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes and then got up and walked towards the school. But she never made it from that walk from, and that was around 9 a.m. when she got up. Uh, she never made it to school after that. Um, it's right next to the school. I don't know why she didn't make it. I don't know if something happened on her walk along the way or if she got taken, but she never made it. And that um, was the last anyone seen of her or heard from her? Yes. Um, I went to pick her up after school um, and she wasn't there. Um, so I started driving around, trying, maybe thinking she took a walk. Maybe she decided to walk to my mom's office, which is pretty close to the school as well. <sighs> drove around and I didn't see anything. I drove back to the school. The school was closed. I emailed one of her teachers. They confirmed that she was absent all day. At that point is when I called 911 because I realized something was truly wrong. Have um, you heard from like any of her friends? Has she been active on any social media? She hasn't been active on social media. None of her chats, none of her games. Uh, we did contact all her friends. None of them had seen her Monday or heard from her. Um, yeah, there's no update. And I have to ask this, and I know I, I hate doing it, but is she the type that would run away? Has this happened in the past or anything? Has she ever threatened to run away? Never. She's never, ever mentioned anything like this before. And she's not the type to want to do this. Um, she did accidentally leave her phone on Monday. Um which is kind of normal for her. She's got ADHD and very forgetful. So she left her phone at home. So there's no way to trace her. They tried tracing her school laptop, um, but that's off. So it's not pinging to anything. What What are you getting from law enforcement? Are, I mean, are they actively searching for her? I mean, what, what happens now? I mean, especially that she doesn't have her phone with her. Um, so as far as I know, they're conducting a search around the school, behind the school. There's a Shingle Creek. There's a, a wooded path area that you could walk. Uh, it's a hiking path. They are going back there with their canine dogs. Uh, they've taken a piece of her clothing to see if they can trace her scent. They're also taking their own vehicles. I'm not sure what type of vehicles, but they're going into the woods to search for her. Um, but I don't feel like that's going to find anything right now. We've had people all day on that trail sending us photos to see if anything there looks familiar and like her personal belongings and nothing is hers. So you think that she's been taken against her will? I do think so, yes. As a mom, you know, what is your what's your mother's intuition telling you right now? I'm trying to hope for the best, but I'm just I'm scared for her. I want her to be okay. I want her to be safe. I don't want to, I don't want her to come back harmed. I, I just I just want her back. Whatever that means. Just I just want her back. Are you getting any updates from law enforcement? I mean, yes, they're searching that small area, but have they gotten any hits on any scent or anything like that? They haven't let me know anything. They haven't updated me since I spoke to them this morning. I've contacted them to get some information or to give them some leads, but I've heard nothing back. This first interview with the news was very strange, at least to me. A lot of people felt like there was just something off about the whole thing. In my opinion, I think Jen appears very put together, very matter of fact for that interview. And when she did appear to start crying, I didn't see any tears. I will say that, you know, the video is a bit grainy, so I'll give some grace there, but still. I also get that everybody reacts differently to tragedy. We can't judge people based on how they're acting, especially parents who are going through the most devastating moments in their lives, but I do think this whole interview just feels a little bit off. What do you guys think? Now, like I said, Maddie left her phone at home before her disappearance, so police collected the phone and examined it for evidence. On her phone, police found messages from February 22nd where she told multiple people that she wanted to live in the woods. 
Because of this, the searches were expanded to include any and all wooded areas. As that was happening, as police were working diligently and following up on tips, Jen and Stefan continued talking to the media to spread the word on the disappearance. In one interview done with WFTV Channel 9 News, both Jen and Stefan did interviews where they both looked distressed and worried. Stefan especially, he was crying and begging Madeline to come back, saying that he kind of blamed himself for what happened. He should have waited longer at the church. He should have watched to make sure she made it to the school. Tell me how you feel right now. I feel like I can't breathe. All I keep thinking about is, where is she? Is she safe? Is she okay? But we're, we're all a wreck. My entire family is a mess. We're just so worried. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Yeah, she was uh, spotted walking uh, by the church, by the middle school, uh, on the cameras. They saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave. They didn't see a vehicle or anything else. They just saw her walk away uh, around 9 a.m., heading towards the school, but she never made it. You seem very emotional right now. Explain to us. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. So last time we saw her. What were the conversations that y'all had in the car when you dropped her off? Not much. She was asleep for most of the way. Told her have a good day at school when she got out. I love her. She said thanks. Love you too. And that was it. And so where, where, where do you think she could possibly be? I mean, this isn't, as I was told, this isn't normal behavior. This is not normal behavior. She's not the type that would just run off. We don't know where she can be. We're scared. We just want her home. Are you, in a sense, blaming yourself? It's hard not to. Why? I dropped her off early. I could have waited longer. She looked okay. She was walking towards the school when I saw her. It was like any other day, so I went on with my day. It's hard not to blame myself. What has the conversation been with Jen since? She's been very, a lot stronger than me. She's been holding it together really well. And, uh, but it just keeps coming in waves. Just the reality keeps hitting. We don't know where she is. We don't know if she's safe. We're just scared. We just want her home. At this time, police kept searching and exhausting all resources they had to follow up on every lead possible. They were desperate to find Maddie, staying hopeful that she was still alive somewhere. Maybe she had run off and truly was hiding somewhere. Maybe she was going to be okay. But the truth of what was going on within the home where Maddie lived was much more disturbing than investigators could have ever imagined. Like I said earlier, when Maddie was first reported missing, police spoke with Jen and Stefan. Well, at the time, they did collect Stefan's phone to do a forensic examination. When handing it over, Stefan told the police that he accidentally factory reset his phone on February 26th, the same day that Maddie went missing. What a coincidence. Well, it seems that the factory reset was not enough to hide what Stefan was attempting to cover up. Turns out, Stefan had been sexually abusing Maddie for quite some time. Investigators believe the abuse has been going on for years, since Maddie was at least 11 years old. On his phone, investigators found several explicit photos and videos of Maddie and her private parts, as well as videos of Stefan sexually violating her raping her repeatedly, to put it bluntly. They also found other videos of child sexual abuse material on Stefan's phone. So, as you can see, Stefan is a sick, sick, disgusting predator living under the same roof 
as a child. By February 28th, after making this discovery, Stefan Stearns was arrested and charged with sexual battery and possession of child sexual abuse materials and was held in Osalia County Jail without bond. It was at that time that Stefan was also named as the primary suspect in Maddie's disappearance. Stefan, where's Maddie? Did you hurt her? Are you a pedophile? What's on your cell phone? Why aren't you talking to investigators? Where was Maddie last seen? Why aren't you helping her mother and her family? This is a little girl. Help them find Maddie. Where is Maddie? What is, where is she? What did you do with her? Tell us something. On the morning of March 1st, investigators announced that they now believed they were searching for a body, believing that Maddie is no longer alive. The sheriff explained that they had video evidence that shows Stefan throwing items into a dumpster behind their apartment complex building at around 7.35 a.m. on the day of Maddie's disappearance. Those items included her backpack and her school laptop. Then by 8.19 a.m., there is more video evidence that shows Stefan returning to the apartment complex with Maddie visible in the car. But police believe that they were looking at Maddie's dead body in that car. Then, unfortunately, by the evening of March 1st, the worst fears of everyone investigating the case and following this case came to fruition. At 4.30 p.m. that day, after five days of searching, police found the body of Madeline Soto in a rural wooded area off Old Hickory Road. Yeah, truly heartbreaking. We are learning that Madeline Soto's body was found right near where I am standing on Hickory Tree Road. And they found her body around 4.30 this afternoon, according to the sheriff's office, in a very wooded area. And a source tells Fox 35 that it takes a couple of miles to get to where her body was found by foot. I want to just show you what it looks like over here right now. You can see we're blocked off um, at this intersection. A sheriff's office deputy blocking off the area where they say that they found Madeline Soto's body. And now this is Sky Fox video of teams out here searching this area. And this, of course, comes after the Orange County Sheriff John Mina said that he was confident that Maddie was dead and that they were working to find her body. That was the latest we had heard from earlier this afternoon, and now we are getting this heartbreaking update that her body was found. I want to show you a picture of this car. This is Stefan Stern's car, who was Maddie's mom's boyfriend. He was a suspect in her homicide case. Um, he was last seen driving a silver Lincoln and in this area of Old Hickory Tree Road and Nolte Road. And now, of course, we are learning that her body was found in a wooded area. Of course, after this horrific discovery, the community was in utter shock and disbelief. Those who knew and loved Maddie were and still are so heartbroken to find out that not only is she dead, but someone in her own home was sexually abusing her. After the announcement was made, hundreds of community members, classmates, and loved ones gathered at Hunter's Creek Middle School to pay their respects to Maddie and remember who she was as a young girl. Father God! A community grieving the death of one of their own, still trying to come to terms with the fact that 13-year-old Madeline Soto is gone. I didn't know Maddie personally, but it still hurts me because it really could have been any of my friends but she's still one of my, I feel like she's family. Religious leaders held a vigil at Hunter's Creek Middle School Friday night. The same school Maddie was supposed to show up to on Monday, but never made it. The Bible teaches us that we have to cry with those who cry and laugh with those who laugh. So now we, we will cry with those who cry. We will mourn for those who mourn, and we will be able to give a message of hope and knowing that um, God is in control through it all. Parents, students, and community members showed up, laying flowers, candles, and balloons down in honor of Maddie. It's heartbreaking and saddening to kind of see this happening. Um, your children are supposed to be protected, um, and unfortunately in this case, she was exposed. Many still in disbelief that this happened. 
hit me very hard knowing that this could happen to a child, a young girl in my neighborhood. And I, I look at it as it was my own daughter. You know what I mean? After Stefan's arrest, obviously people wanted answers and they still do. But Stefan is not talking. He didn't even show up to his first court appearance, having his defense team appear on his behalf. Of course, he pleaded not guilty to his charges. Then, almost two weeks after his initial arrest, the state's attorney's office filed 60 additional charges against Stefan. These charges include eight counts of sexual battery of a child under the age of 12, five counts of sexual battery with a child aged 12 to 18, seven counts of molestation, and 40 counts of unlawful possession of child sexual abuse material. As of right now, Stefan has not yet been charged with Maddie's murder. We also don't yet know a cause of death as of right now. Investigators said that now that this is a death investigation, it has gotten very complex, so until they have concrete answers, they are considering everyone in Maddie's life as suspects. It's a good thing that at least Stefan is behind bars so he can't escape and he is going to be facing some sort of punishment for what he did to Maddie. I also do want to note that as of right now, Maddie's mother, Jen, is not a suspect in anything. She hasn't been accused of any wrongdoing in the case. However, given that Stefan was her boyfriend and given how long the sex abuse had been going on, I personally, and this is just my opinion, I find it very hard to believe that she had no idea the entire time. I'm not going to sit here and say that she knew about her daughter being murdered, but man, I don't believe she was totally in the dark about the abuse. I just don't see how it's possible to abuse a child for two or more years and then recording it on your phone multiple times. He was charged with 40 counts of child sexual abuse material, so it was over 40 videos all under the same roof as her mother, and somehow this whole thing was kept a secret. I think that Jen had to have known that something was going on. And whether or not she knew that Stefan murdered Maddie, I think she may have had a feeling, but that's what I think. What do you guys think? To sum up this case, Madeline Soto was sexually abused and raped by Stefan Stearns, her mother's boyfriend, for at least two years. She was murdered, and Stefan has been arrested on sexual abuse charges, but no one has yet been charged with her murder, though he is still the prime suspect. The investigation is still very much ongoing and police are working diligently to get justice in this case. As of right now, I don't want to get into theories just yet of how I think Maddie was killed or why. Obviously, it has something to do with the sexual abuse in my opinion, whether it was because Maddie was getting ready to tell or because something went wrong in the process, we still don't know. According to investigators, they believed that she was killed before 7 a.m. on the 26th, before he was seen discarding her items into that dumpster. And again, he drove back to the apartment complex with her body still in the car. So we know that he never intended on bringing her to school that morning, and we also don't necessarily know where she was killed. Was it in the car or was it at home? We still don't have that answer. But there are a few things I still want to know. Was Jen home that day? Does she work early before Maddie usually gets up? Was she still asleep when Maddie was driven to school? I just have so many questions about that morning and when she was actually killed. Again, the logistics of if she was murdered in that home where Jen lived, how did she not know? Or if they left really early for school, like at 7 in the morning and he drove her somewhere, killed her in the car, and then came back, was she not suspicious? Did she not ask any questions like, why are you guys leaving so early this morning? Something else I also wanted to point out that really stood out to me as I was editing this video is in those interviews, both Jen and Stefan say that Maddie was captured on surveillance video walking around that church parking lot, yet police say that she was dead before that even took place, that he never even dropped her off at the parking lot to begin with. So, Another question I have is, were they lying about that surveillance video? Where is that surveillance video? Have police confirmed or denied its existence? 
that's a question I still have. I still have so many questions and I want to know how Jen didn't know about all of this going on right under her nose for so many years. I have so many questions and I'm sure you do too, but unfortunately, we just don't have those answers yet. That is all of the information we have in this case up to this point. I have been following this case from the very beginning and I was genuinely hoping for a better outcome, but this is what we are left with. Maddie deserved so much more in her life, but instead, she was stuck living with a man who was abusing her, who stole her childhood, who violated her in the worst ways possible. As I stated, we don't yet know her cause of death, but I'm sure once that's released, there will be more movement in this case. And as soon as we know more, I will update you all. But that is all I have for today's video, and now I want to know what you guys think. My biggest question, do you think Maddie's mom knew about the abuse? What do you think of her interviews? What do you think of Stefan not being charged with the murder yet? When do you think that will happen? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Spotify. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.